Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Master Wing channel. We have some exciting Oceania footage for you today. We have been loving uh, this release, this new expansion. It has changed the game, I think, for the better. Um, if this is your first time here, this channel is centralized around everything Wingspan. So I hope I can earn your subscription, maybe a like or um, a comment to see what you guys think about it. Um, check out this starting hand. We... Wow. So the starting tray has a kill deer. This is a post-game commentary. Um, apologies, we've been sick a little bit. Still got a little red eye going on. Um, but check out what we have. I think the ring build goal is okay. I don't want to pass out cards with the canvas back. Uh, Bewick's Ren is one of those cards in, in my top 10 never played list. Um, a migratory three food bird isn't, isn't what I'm looking for here. The emu, even though it's a new bird, um, the, the few games I've played it, it hasn't been great for me. And for three food cost, I don't think it's an emu game. The golden eye helps me to um, get some eggs on the board without taking the lay eggs action. And as we know in Oceania, it's tougher to gain eggs with the nerfed grassland. Um, I'm assuming my opponent's going to take the kill deer still. Uh, we keep Rodentologist. Like I said, this is a post-game commentary. But if he takes Killdeer and leaves the Black Naughty and maybe even Carolina Wren, since we're going second, I'm hoping I can grab both of those cards with my Nectar. I think that's what I want to do. He does take the Killdeer and... Um, since the Carolina Wren's a cavity nest as well, and it kind of goes with the golden eye, I'm thinking, why not? Playing a game against Clone Pepper, very good player, probably one of the highest ELO players I, I usually face off against. Uh, Western Tanager from the OG game. That's a good force bird. So they will probably be stalling for round two. Um, again, if this is your first time here, we do honor the Wingspan Tournament Discord house rules because that is how we found this opponent today. Uh, so we have to wait to play the Ravens, uh, the Chihuahuan and the Common, the Killdeer and Franklin's Gull um, until round two. So I'm thinking if he picked up the Killdeer, they're just going to stack up on food and then go... Kill deer round two, and, and they'll have plenty of food to play birds. Uh, you saw we did pick up another uh, couple cards there. Um, the buzzard and the cysticola. Um, thinking we, we maybe could do a double play, and the uh, buzzard is a rodentologist bird, and we, we kept the rodentologist bonus card, so... Here we go, finally getting some food. Um, this this round one is just so accelerated with Oceania, and I love it. You get to play more birds. Uh, the goshawk and the magpie would be nice. Um, wouldn't be surprised if my opponent takes those. I'm just wondering if I have enough turns to, to grab them. I elect to get the golden eye down first, so then I can draw two cards. If the magpie is there, great. If not, we 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 live with it. <clears throat> so, like I said, this is not the beta test. This is the real deal, Oceania. I like the new nectar uh, setup as far as the user interface. Uh, some of the complaints were that you had to switch back and forth between opponents to see the, the nectar count and who's winning. And they gave us a little visual indicator there, a half star if you are tied, a gray star if you're losing, or the full star if you are winning the habitat. So just nice and easy to see. It just adds to the intricacies of this game. Um, we could do Cysticola Buzzard right on top of the Cysticola, but the Cysticola is another cavity nest with that star. We have zero food. Um, five turns left. There's also the cuckoo in the tray. 
I think at this point I'm, I'm deciding, do we gain food or do we grab this cuckoo? Assuming that they're going to put the kill deer in the grassland and that pink power can be so crucial in those games. Not any egg heavy end of round goals. And I am getting eggs from that common golden eye. So we're just taking our time here. Um, I mean, only grabbing two food from the tray. The, uh, I'm assuming we grab the cuckoo right here. The pink ear duck. So you draw two cards from the deck and you give to another player. I've had some bad experiences against Ronster with the pink ear duck. So we pass on everything right there. Um, don't even, I guess we contemplate the cuckoo, but, uh, elect that it's going to be too expensive. And then we have Gold's Finch in the tray. Another cavity nest bird. Four turns left. I've been drawing from the deck. Uh, nothing crazy going on here. My opponent plays American Robin, which is, of course, a consistent uh, tuck and draw bird. And here's some nectar for us. I like it. I like it. I think we can draw cards with the Gold's Finch, play Sisticola and the Gold's Finch to win the end of round, or maybe tie it. That'd put two birds in my grassland. And then that would get us to the third slot to be able to lay three eggs if we wanted to. And since my opponent hasn't grabbed a Gold's Finch, we grab a Nectar on the reroll. And um, I'm thinking draw cards and play the Sisticola. And then we should gain, I'm hoping they don't grab Gold's Finch, but that should give us three eggs in the cavity nest for the golden eye. Oh wow, and the white backed woodpecker. What did they grab? I was not even paying attention. I was just so focused on Gold's Finch. Um, we spend our nectar here. And then I'm thinking uh, we, we can grab that white backed woodpecker as well. It's just a better version. I have the yellow bellied sapsucker in my hand. I'm thinking white backed woodpecker, if I can grab it the last turn of this round. The Sisticola, of course, lets you play another bird with a one egg discount, so I don't need another egg to play two birds. I really thought picking up Gold's Finch and double playing into that would be better. There we go. That's the cavityness we were looking for. That Carolina Wren can be good for like a, you know, a quick two card draw, but. That woodpecker getting us that extra food, that's going to help us. European Goldfinch is a great card. Wish I wish I could have grabbed it. but um, and, and they play Magpie. Interesting. Um, I, don't, I don't think we're going to be using eggs much with the Golden Eye. So the Magpie, I'm surprised they played it. I thought they were just grabbing it to deny it. Uh, but yeah, the Goldfinch would have been good. But I, I want to tie this into round. And um, that's a four point play plus that turns into like a six point play because now we had two eggs from that. And then we tied the end around goal. So it was an eight point play uh, ultimately with the Sisticola. Nothing in the tray that I'm really going for. So we go straight into white backed woodpecker. I'm feeling good about this start. I really want to get the Black Naughty down, 
because my opponent has a kill deer and we really don't have that card draw. And especially in Oceania, I'm just finding more and more that card access is winning the games because on this layout, uh, you can see in so many spaces, you can discard your extra cards for eggs or food or birds, whatever it is. Um, there's so many ways to get rid of extra cards that it, it, the more cards you draw, the better and more points you score ultimately. That's what I'm finding on this Oceania game. I'm also finding that the round four turns take a lot longer, or maybe I'm just slow, but the calculations, um, you know, a nectar here, but then you lose the, the bonus points, but then you tie the end of round goal, but then you have a yellow power at the end, but oh wait, you can't use nectar for the yellow, end, yellow powers. And it's just on and on, your brain is hurting. So be patient with those of us who are taking longer to play because Oceania, that nectar battle, has a lot more going on. Uh, the main duck is in the tray. My opponent laid eggs, that is expected. I know my opponent doesn't need the main duck, but I think I need the main duck to, to dig for some cards. It, it's still somewhat early game, so great tit. Main duck, we're, we're doing it. We are doing it, and we did grab enough food for the great tit. Another cavity nest. Of course, we already have four, so that common golden eye will be maxed out every round. The superb liar bird is interesting, but I don't think my opponent has another forest bird that I really want to copy. At least not at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if they grab it. Um, you know, it doesn't really help me with my bonus cards. I'm looking for rodentologist birds. But I'm thinking, since we have the eggs for it, and the goal is rats and fish, I'm thinking we play great tit, gain food, and then get this black naughty down. I think that's the move. Then I can gain four food, maybe five. Five food in one turn is just wild. And then uh, hopefully we can win this second end around goal with the Black Naughty. Black Naughty, too naughty. Uh, what they do? Gain food? That's fine. I'm not sure if this kill deer is as unbeatable. As it, as it felt like in the original game with European Expansion. Um, I mean, you're still only laying two eggs right now. And then you get a discard with the Robin, so that's three points. But then you discard the egg, so you're back down to two. It's, it's just not a big point producer. And check it out, we just got three nectar, three fish. Now we are ready to unload all of this um, food. Um, don't think we have enough turns to get the main duck and the black naughty down. Trying to think here. We do need to burn the nectar. Of course, the nectar gets discarded at the end of the round. And um, it, it, it all just depends on what my opponent plays. But I may play this buzzard. Because I don't need another egg for it. And Clone Pepper is too good a player. I'm thinking they could make a push for this end of round goal. Because right now it only shows that I have one one on the board. That, that one fish for the common golden eye. 
Let's see what they did here. Um, okay, so they laid eggs again. So they've got two more turns. They have one nectar. We'll go ahead and get this black naughty down. So the black naughty, I mean, let's just talk about how good this is. It's nine points. If you have falconer or rodentologist, it's an 11 point bird because it is a predator. And the fact that a nine point bird is can still score points on top of that. I mean, to me, that's almost a must grab every time for early game. Unless it just totally doesn't work out or it's just there's no way you're going to get three uh, nectar or three fish. I, every time I've played the Black Naughty, it, it becomes a 10, 11, 12 point bird because its brown power lets you reset the bird feeder and gain fish, I believe. And then you can discard the fish for tucks. So it's a nine point predator that, that, that tucks and scores you more points. I just, these birds, every expansion just keep getting bigger and, and badder. Um, so we have four. That's fine. Um, I think we should win this end of round goal. Part of me wants to gain food and stack up, but I think I'm going to play the common buzzard because when I gain food with the great tit and the white back woodpecker, I want to grab a bunch of nectar. And if I do that on the last turn of rounds, I, I'm not going to, I'd just be wasting the nectar I grab. So we go ahead and play the common buzzard. I think that's still an okay play. It turns into a Let's see, three, four, a six point play. That's still okay. And just in case my opponent did a double play into Benelli's, I wanted to get one more rat on the scoreboard because I could see them doing like a, a great blue heron into Benelli's or, or something like that. And then all of a sudden I lose the end of round. Clone Pepper is that good. I just... Uh, I thought the common buzzard was still a good play. And even though we got rid of the Cysticola nest, I'm hoping that doesn't bite me in the back. We still got four eggs on that golden eye, and I don't think I've laid eggs this entire game. Oh, man. My opponent goes first, and two birds that I'm particularly interested in more so is the noisy miner. That brown power is a three-point activation. For those of you who do not know what it does, you tuck one for your one from your hand, and you lay two eggs on the noisy miner, and then your opponent also gets to lay an egg. So it's a surplus uh, of two points, but you, but you're scoring three. And then the Australian ibis, the bin chicken. You look through the discard pile. You, um, I think it's two cards. Is it two cards? Um, you, you look at the card and you can keep it. Let me see. Draw two cards. Yeah. You can, you can, uh, keep the card or tuck it. So Australian Ibis can be a tucking bird or some, some card draw. All right. So they laid eggs and picked up both of those birds pretty much as expected. Uh, we go straight into the main duck. We are waiting on those eggs for the golden eye and I'm liking our, our, our mid game here. We've got what eight birds down versus a kill deer. Um, I, I think we're ahead. I think we're ahead. They have me on tucks and it all depends on this. These, these next couple turns. Um, because if I just draw a bunch of blanks and, and a bunch of nothing, then I could kind of slow down my tempo here. I think the ring build goal, even though I, I started out with it, um, with the black naughty and then the golden eye, and then we picked up the main duck, I, I think it's kind of running out of its time. It's a two point play and then maybe I tuck two or three under it, but I don't think it's worth it. And check it out, Peregrine Falcon, fortune favors the bold. 
Uh, that will go well with my rodentologist. Oh, Barrel's golden eye, I forgot. Um, so that 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 was huge. We just picked up two great birds there. Um, I'm debating discarding an egg. But we keep the eggs. We keep the eggs. Uh, we are going to tuck both of these. Uh, the main duck lets you tuck up to three cards, which is awesome. And you gain a seed. And Black Naughty, what are we talking about? It is now a 10-point bird. I, I don't think I want to keep the fish. Do we want to keep the fish? No. Don't keep the fish, Master Wing. Don't keep the fish. We tuck those. 10 points. Minus the egg costs 9 points. We'll gain food for some nectar next turn. And food cost of played birds. I'm thinking that favors us. I think we'll play the Barrow's Golden Eye next. Uh, we have plenty of uh, cavity nests to lay on. That kind of fixes any extra egg problem that I was going to have. And I am just loving our tempo of this game. Right when I say that, my opponent plays a, a great card to pair with the kill deer, and that is the bush tit. We know what the bush tit does. Scores you two points. A tuck and lay. Check it out for nectar. Um, man. The amount of food you can grab on one turn. Now, granted, we have the great tit and the woodpecker, but... Food is not a problem. Uh, I'm only having to dip into the, the forest once. They play the bin chicken. Uh, the Let me see here. Hold on just a second. Okay, sorry guys. Had a little camera issue. We are back. Uh, switched locations. Um, and now we have a cat in the camera. My cat, Bagheera. So we'll try to... Stay focused as much as we can. Y'all don't care, right? I don't care. Um, we play the Barrow's Golden Eye. My opponent just played the Australian Ibis. Uh, like we mentioned, just talked about uh, digging through the discard pile. But now when he lays eggs, I will be getting an extra egg, taking a point off of that engine because of all the cavity nests and that Golden Eye. So one, two, three, four, we'll say five with the Ibis, six, seven with the Bush Tit. Uh, then his points go down to six with the Killdeer, and they go back up with the Robin. Um, so we're looking at about a seven point engine. And, and then uh, that Magpie he has is pretty much useless because we haven't laid eggs this entire game. Um, Peregrine Falcon is nice. But we have, okay, here, we have like seven turns left, so um, I, I need more. I need more. We're going to draw cards. Let me see if I can get this to work. Okay. You know what? Bagheera has been in the camera, so let's just show him off a little bit here. Let me see. We're drawing cards, you know what we're doing. Let's see, this is Bagheera, who likes birds, but is primarily an inside cat. He's purring right now on my lap, hold on. I'm trying to get him on the camera. There you go. He's a, he's a big cat, look at this. You know, Bagheera after the Black Panther. Come on, guys. Y'all wanted to see a cat on the Master Wing channel. <sighs> All right. So anyway, we got distracted. Um, really? You're going to flick your tail right there? Okay. We drew cards. We drew cards. We got a Brolga. We got a Lapwing. And honestly, I'm thinking the rough might be a decent play instead of the Peregrine Falcon. I've got two Nectar to burn this last turn. 
And the rough, assuming I have three cards remaining for the rest of the game, will turn into at least a seven-point play. So let's rough it up here. The Lapwing, the Horned Lark, I think that other card is, and the Brolga, not really what we're looking for. Uh, we did get another cash on the... I mean, we got another tuck on the Naughty. Uh, so that bird is... Just continues to impress me. We'll see. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Tell me in the comments. Am I overthinking how good the Black Naughty can be? I mean, even if it only succeeds twice. I mean, 11 points. Why not? Uh, we do get to go first. Uh, like I said, this last round, I've been just... Um, going in circles oftentimes with, with how many what-if scenarios can occur if my opponent spends a nectar in this forest, in this habitat, or in that habitat, what are they going to do? And um, just debating the, the six-point swing on end-of-round goals along with your bonus card and the nectar, it, it's difficult. It, it can make wingspan more intricate. It's still fun, but it just adds another element uh, to try to get your end game right. And and we still probably haven't figured that out completely. Uh, we are gaining some extra food here. And we took all the nectar being so greedy. Trying to win these nectar habitats. Um, it looks like I'm tied in the forest. And winning the grassland and the wetlands. I need to see... So, so we're done with the grassland. So that's a nice thing. Uh, they can't play another grassland bird. I really wish I had like a... Like a night heron. With, with the rodentologist bonus card there. Um, end around goal is cards in hand. We could draw another turn. Uh, we've got a Peregrine Falcon. I think before we draw, we play Peregrine Falcon. Yep. And why not just, let's see, just put it in the wetlands. Um, it's still a five-point play total, including the egg cost. And then maybe it gets one, one activation before we draw cards again. And any extra cards we will get rid of for eggs or uh, tuck them under the rough. I think that's a pretty good endgame. We don't have anything crazy that we want to play that uh, Tui. I think I have a Tui in the Cockatiel. Uh, we don't really need that. And if you think about it, me laying eggs, and let's just say I dispense four food. So that's four eggs. It's really a three-point play because their magpie will eventually activate. And the alternative is drawing cards, probably a tuck with the falcon, probably one, maybe two tucks. There's the black crown knight heron. One, maybe two tucks with the, the main duck. We'll just say two. So, so we're sitting at three. And then you get a naughty activation. So four. Plus you pressure that end of round goal with cards in hand. And you can tuck three with the uh, rough. So I think drawing cards is a little bit better than uh, laying eggs right now. Here's the tricky part. They could gain a card with the Ibis, gain two cards with the Killdeer. We are winning the goal right now, but I'm trying to debate how many cards I tuck with the main duck. I don't want to lose out on points, obviously, and leave points on the table. Um, let me see. We have to remember we have that gold sfinch in the back. Black naughty. Black naughty is so naughty. Black naughty, so naughty. Um... So two turns left. I I draw cards. Yeah, that was a five-point turn, by the way. That was awesome. 
And I have food to play the cockatiel or the nightingale for my gold's finch. It's not the best bird. Just wondering how many cards we withhold tucking under the main duck. Because if they're just going to spam the kill deer and win the end of round goal anyway, then I don't want to fight for it. We're playing a little bit of mind games here because Clone Pepper could... I mean, technically he could have more cards, but then he'd have to skip the bush tit. And he'd probably have to skip tucking under the Australian Ibis as well. So we're sitting at four to three right now. I say we draw cards, we see what we get, and then go from there. We have two nectar that we'd like to spend. Let's see. Four, three. You play the North Island Brown Kiwi. You discard a bonus card and you draw four bonus cards. And you get to keep two of them. That's a good end game play if you have a sucky bonus card. You can see us taking our time here. We, we don't want to waste our two nectar, but at the same time... I want to make sure we at least get something off of this Gould's Finch. You can see us flipping back and forth. He only has four egg spaces left. He could uh, gain another three cards. In the next two turns, he could gain a total of six cards. So that's what we need to keep in mind when we're making our decision about this main duck. Oh, Eastern Screech Owl, that's right. I think that's what the doctor ordered. Um, that gives me something to play last turn. Peregrine Falcon in the wetlands. Let's talk about it. All right, so we're sitting at eight, and Clone Pepper has three. We're going to play the owl. That's seven. So we're going to end up at seven. And he could gain, since he goes second, technically he could gain another six cards. But I kind of want to pressure it just so he, he thinks about not using the bush tit. I think we only tuck one right here. Um, I mean, it's impossible to predict what, what they're going to do the last two turns. I just assume with him going second, he gets to basically wait and see. And I don't want to hang on to all these cards. What, we have eight cards and then end up losing the end around anyway when I could have scored points with the main duck. So these are the headaches that, that we're talking about right now. Somebody in the comments can can let me know what they think, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll always have hindsight 2020 and, and live and learn after the game. But I think if I only tuck one and then play the Screech Owl for, what's that? Um, I guess that's only another four point play with the Screech Owl, but then I win the forest nectar battle Yeah, I, the, the Screech Owl is still good because it lets me win the forest habitat. And that Black Naughty, I mean, I don't know if it's failed this one. Has, has it failed one time this game? I'm not sure. 13-point um, bird. Um, they don't have any nectar to spin, so I think I should steal this forest end of round. So we go from three points to five so that's a that's a two two plus on the nectar battle and then 
Four points for the screech owl, that's six. Minus the two eggs, we're back down to four. But then the bonus card is two, so we're back up to a six-point play for the eastern screech owl. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. And I think we waste we we lose a nectar here and I think in order to win the end of round goal he'll have to keep three cards. So I think that was just enough amount of pressure to make him skip out on a bush tit. I could be wrong. Uh, Clone Pepper, if you're watching this, maybe you have all of this mastered. But um, I, I really didn't want to put a huge emphasis on this end of round goal. I've repeated myself like three times. but So they only have one egg space left. One turn and two food. I'm assuming they play a bird, maybe like a brown falcon or something, with with that food cost. Okay, so they just laid eggs. And they have four cards right now. So I think they missed out on an ibis tuck, Maybe. And then they have to activate the kill deer again to win the end of round goal. Of course, discarding an egg. So I think we played that pretty well. Um, I like our chances against this kill deer board. We got a lot of birds down, a lot of cavity nests, um, main duck, and the naughty. I like our chances here. Oh, this rough is actually important because I have food. And I have a gold finch at the end of the game. So I could really use a bonus card bird that's two seeds or something. Or um, I don't even know if there is a bonus card bird like that. Um, we can't play Cormorant. We don't want the Oriole. Come on, give me something good here. Ugh. Oh, Carrion Crow. Normally, like before Oceania, I just tuck the last three in the rough. But now that we have yellow powers, that rough actually becomes more important. Because I could have gained, you know, three better cards um, to play at the end there. I would have loved to see a Benelli's Eagle. That would have been so sick. Um, unfortunately, we can only play the uh, Nightingale for just a one-pointer since all we have are seeds. Um, you know, it would have been cool if we would have got that carrion crow down, but we tried. We tried. Thank you for watching, everybody. Favorite part, here comes the score. Check out this hat. I don't, I'm sure it's backwards on the camera, but it says wing. If you are not a master wing fan, you're not a subscriber, but you just like wingspan, let me know in the comments. I'm thinking my wife made this for me. So... Maybe she can make more for you guys. Um, check out our lead here. We won on um, eggs and bird points. We were even on Tux, 19-19, and we win all the nectar. 110-87, the kill deer upset. I think I talked to Clone Pepper after this, and I think they said they just leave the kill deer next time. I think it kind of threw them off a little bit, and that Oceania grassland, I'm not sure if the kill deer is the one. We had the golden eyes, two golden eyes, and a black naughty. I mean, two golden eyes and a black naughty. We had the counters. Thank you for watching, everybody. See you next time on the channel. Peace.